hello welcome to everyone in this video this is uh, part 3 of the solution of nuclear and particle physics dsc v1 for semester 5 under university of calcutta uh, of the question 2021 on physics honors we already covered two part on question 1 and question 2 in this part we want to discuss question number 3 to 5 of this question paper right so if you want to watch previous lecture you can go through the description box link are given there you can see this is the question paper this question number one and this question number two already discussed in previous two part in this part we want to discuss question number three question number four and this question number five and upcoming session we will be discuss question number six seven and eight so let's start today's discussion First question says the semi empirical mass formula neglecting the pairing uh, term. They are also a pairing term here, neglecting this pairing term are given like that. Where well, these are constant given here. Using this formula so that this mass number a comma z a is the uh, mass number, a z is the atomic number of this mass, follows a parabolic variation with z for a group of iso bar. So, for a group of isobar, that means for isobar means A, that is the mass number is constant. For a given mass number, where the constant mass number, for constant mass number, uh, this M A comma Z must be A follows the parabolic graph. We need to prove that. So, you just put here Z, M, Z and this N is nothing but A minus Z. A is the mass number, Z is the atomic number. So, if this difference is the given the neutron number, so N can be replaced like that. And these are uh, written here. And again, this whole square into break, uh, whole square into bracket. Now, you just separate out the constant term. This is the coefficient of Z and this is the coefficient of Z square. I think you can do this separation. After that, we just retain this as a constant term, this as a P and this as a Q in the short form. And you can see this is nothing but the equation of a parabola. So we just prove that is a parabolic curve representing this here. Next, next, next question so, uh, asks that find out an expression for the atomic number for the most stable isobar. Hence, identify the most stable isobar corresponding to mass number A equals to 109. So, last we just find out this mass is like that. That is the constant term. This is P into Z and this Q into Z square. For stable isobar, we, we can say the rel M del Z at constant A equals to 0. We just taking this derivative of this equation with respect to Z, you will be get this one. So finally, the value of Z is minus P by 2Q. Put this value of P and Q, you just find out this relation, okay? So if you put A equals to 109 and the constant value you already given here in this question, if you put this value, you will be obtained 47. And you know 47 is the um, Z value of silver. So this is the uh, actually Z value of silver. I think clear about the up to that point. Next question says, what would be the stable isobar corresponding to A equals to 109 if the symmetry energy term of the mass formula were not taken into account? You can uh, you, you know this is the symmetry term that is the A minus 2Z whole square by A into A4. Now if we neglecting this term, we will be only getting this one and just separate out you will be obtained again a parabolic curve no problem but the constants are different now the things is that for stable configuration this must derivative must be zero and you will be get this equation now if you put a equals to 109 in this equation you will be obtained z equals to 3 so you can see for a equals to 109 z equals to 3 and z equals to 3 is lithium so the lithium with the value of a is 109 is impossible so you can see in mathematical consideration that without this symmetry term we obtain when a equals to 109 this is 47 this is relevant but with z equals to 3 you can see here where i get 
z value 3 but is 109 so with the z value 3 and a equals to 109 this component cannot exist at all so this symmetry term is most important term one of the important term in this formula okay so this is written here and i think you understand these things what i want to see go to the next question next question says to show slow down neutron what will be the preferable choice of material between paraffine blocks and the red box if you wants to slow down the neutron which type of material you wants to use that is paraffine block or red block actually neutron is neutral neutron is neutral that is no charge so it cannot be slowed down with the help of applying electric field without uh, with the help of applying electric field you cannot slow down the neutron right we cannot slow down the neutron okay so neutron can be slowed down using the elastic collision if the neutron collide with the another charged particle with elastic collision and this charged particle moving and this can be uh, stop down with the help of the electric field so this is the possibility you can slow down the neutron you can slow down the neutron with the help of the elastic collision of the neutron with the charged particle and this charged particle is slow down or stopped with the help of electric field so this is the process so you need to the charged particle for the elastic collision and you know for elastic collision if the mass of two particle nearly same then the collision is elastic collision that's why we need to require hydrogen particle for neutron because this mass are nearly equal so hydrogen is most preferable and in paraffin this hydrogen is uh, available more available that's why is paraffin block is more preferable than the lead block in case of the neutron slow down clear next question next question says explain Bohr independence hypothesis on compound nuclear reaction compound nuclear reaction means actually in the nuclear reaction we have some parents and some daughters right so these two elements are converted into this one in the Bohr's independence hypothesis says that these two elements combine into a complex element and then emit this complex element can be generated in different composition and it can be emitted in different composition composition this formation and this emission or uh, ejection or the compound pro production this formation and this production actually does not this actually does not dependent to each other that means uh, a1 plus a2 can form b2 plus b2 a1 a2 plus a2 can form b3 plus b3 b1 plus b2 any, any, any form can form any 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 of this can be formed this is the independence hypothesis that when, when this is from it does not remember from which it is occurred and it cannot remember it can decay in any form okay so this is the Bohr's independent hypothesis of compound nuclear reaction next consider a alpha particle of energy like that with the gold estimate the radius of nucleus actually when this alpha particle goes to this nucleus the closest approach actually is the radius so this kinetic energy converted into the potential energy so just compare these two things kinetic energy is equal to potential energy you will be obtained this value of r this is the kinetic energy and this is the potential energy 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r so from here you can easily find out this value of r so this value of r is 45.5 femtometer clear go to the next question next question says the alpha spectra is discrete but the beta spectra is continuous why explain 
actually alpha particle discrete because the transition up to energy levels are discrete because this gap is discrete that's why this energy also discrete and suppose this uh, alpha particle is right when this radioactive elements x change to y but there are separate energy levels in this y value which are which are actually this uh, defined energy level gives you defined discrete value but the energy value of these two levels actually discrete so energies are discrete not continuous in case of beta this is continuous why actually in case of beta this also discrete but this also discrete but uh, this energy uh, continuous because this discrete value actually uh, divided into two part one is beta particle another one is the uh, neutrino okay so there is a neutrino hypothesis this excess energy you can see here this number of particle is maximum with a certain energy after that this number of particle is reduced with this energy so this much of energy actually used in the neutrino so this is the uh, cause why this alpha particle gives your discrete and beta particle is continuous uh, in case of alpha particle there is no uh, there is no phenomena of the neutrino no existence of the neutrino but in beta particle this is weak interaction and there is neutrino which actually change this nature next says Question number three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So next question is question number five, which says that write down the Bethe formula for the energy loss of heavy charged particle due to ionization while passing through a matter and explain its term therein. That's mean when a charged particle passing through a uh, matter, the loss Bethe formula says the stopping power that is the energy uh, loss per unit length are traveling this is the value classically this one in quantum mechanical this one where you can see this z is atomic number e is electronic charge in is number density epsilon not is permittivity in free space m is the mass of electron v is the velocity of particle i is the average ionization potential okay now the next part says that is the consider an alpha particle with the proton having the same energy what will be the higher range okay so the range expression is like that you can just put this value uh, you can easily find out this expression of the range is like that now this for in case of proton and uh, alpha particle this z is like that and the mass will be like that so if you compare the range it will be like this so the range of proton is higher than that of alpha. Next question, given a specific ionization by an alpha particle is given inversely proportional to the instantaneous velocity. So the specific radius uh, ionization that is d e by dx equal proportional to 1 by v and so that the range of alpha particle uh, r proportional to e to the 3 by 2. So this gives you like that and just substituted this one and uh, finally uh, integrating uh, at this zero when it's just printed at this zero velocity is v initial velocity at the range stopping range the velocity must be zero so if you comparing this thing you can easily find out this velocity range is proportional to e to the power 3 by 2 next thing mention mention any one practical application of Bragg's curve Bragg's curve actually gives you the spotting uh, range stopping sorry stopping range of alpha particle when the alpha particle penetrate through a material uh, the range maximum range up to that material actually penetrated is the uh, range which is obtained from the black curve this is the range point maximum limit this actually helps in the cancer therapy when this uh, alpha particle penetrate up to a certain range so it's uh, uh, cannot harmful for the healthy tissue 
right so in cancer there is a damaged tissue you need to destroy this damaged tissue so if you kind know the uh, spreading of the cancer tissue so you applying this alpha particle and it's can uh, it can remove this defect cell with the uh, it's the stopping range okay so we just uh, can use this as in the biological term of the therapy okay so i think clear if this, there is any doubt you must comment in the comment box this is all about me and this is my contact detail you can connect with this telegram channel and this is my youtube channel details go to this channel you will get different free videos some mathematics like this session if you learn something from this session share this video to your friends either he or she also get benefit from the video subscribe this channel if you need this channel those already subscribe thanks for the question press the bell icon to get notification of aqua so take care we'll meet you in the next video as soon as possible thank you